Hi again. If you remember in the last episode, we were talking about ActionScript and how we could use it to access different in instances of objects that we create on the stage. In this, this time, we're actually going to dynamically access and create instances of objects using ActionScript exclusively. So if you remember last time, we had to create an instance and drag and drop it from the library to the stage. This time, we're going to skip that part and do it directly with ActionScript. So if you remember, if we look at the example here again, we have a circle that's on the stage. In order to give ActionScript the ability to code to that circle, we had to give it an instance name. The instance name is, is what ActionScript requires for that instance to be scriptable. But now what we need to do is we need to give the actual object in the library a name that we can access with ActionScript. If you remember, we used the sticky note example re representing that every single, every single note that we take off represents an instance of that object. So in this case, again, it's, a, it's orange. It's an orange square, let's say. So if I want to take this instance, I'd have to name this. So I could call it my orange square. What we want to do now is actually name the stack itself. So in this case, I'm going to call it orange square. And that will be, actually represent the entire stack of notes. If you remember what we did last time, when we created the, uh, when we created the instance of the circle here, we actually use the linkage panel in the advanced properties here. What we needed to do that for was to give this a name that would represent the entire stack or the library I item that, we, of, that is of the basic circle itself. We named it circle because we needed to have a name that ActionScript could use to access the circle. If you remember last time, we were scripting everything to just the instance. This time, we're actually going to create an instance using ActionScript by using this circle name that we have uh, here in the linkage panel. So what we're going to do is we're going to create, we're going to remove this instance that we have here on the stage because everything we're going to do is going to be entirely done with ActionScript. So what I've done is I've removed the object, and if I'm going to just confirm that the, um, I'm just going to confirm real fast that I've set this up correctly. If you notice, the class is called Circle. The class, we're going to be going into classes in, in, a, in a later tutorial, but the class is the name that we're applying to the stack of notes. In this case, the stack of circle objects. If I wanted to rename this, let's say that I create, let me create a square, and I'm going to give the square a blue fill color. If I create the square and I right click on the square and I say convert to symbol, let me call it blue square. As soon as I do export for ActionScript, you'll notice that the class name or the stack of notes analogy that we've been using, it actually removes the space between blue and square. That's because these types of names that we use in the class, uh, the class field here and also for instance names can't contain spaces. So what it does is it takes that blue square name that we are applying in the library and are actually just removing the space. So it does that for us automatically. The other item that you see here, base class, you can ignore that for now. We're actually going to be going into that and what that means later on. So now I've created my blue square instance. And if I just click OK, I will get into this uh, another tutorial as well. But what, what, now that I actually have the blue square here, you'll notice that in the linkage side, I have an export blue square and an export circle. What this means is that it's linked to these particular names that I can then use in ActionScript to create instances of these objects. Every single object that I create using, using Flash, I can give an export name. All these names can then be used by ActionScript to dynamically create instances using exclusively code. And we're going to be doing that in the next tutorial.